Awesome, so in the last few videos, we created the user interface for this weather app. We implemented the weather fetching logic where we can type in the name of a city, say Paris, and the temperature and the condition would be displayed below. Now, instead of viewing this in 2D format as a text, what we're going to do is we're going to use the power of augmented reality to display and visualize this information in 3D. So what we're going to have is a cube placed on the table, which will display the condition in visual format and the temperature as a 3D text placed right on top of the cube. So let's start building this AR bit of this app. So I'm going to close this. So first, let's integrate an AR view into the Swift UI app. So for that, it's a bit trickier because there's no native Swift UI component for an AR view. So what we have to do is wrap a UI kit AR view component inside a Swift UI subview. For that, let's first of all create a separate section. So we're going to do that here by first creating a struct called AR view container. This would inherit from the UI view representable protocol. And as you can see, this is a wrapper to convert a UI kit view to a Swift UI view. Also, awesome. so let's create that. Inside, we need to add in some methods that will conform to this protocol. Firstly, it's type alias uh, UI view type. And this would be an AR view. And next, we need to implement the make UI view method and also the update UI view method. And the make UI view method should return an AR view. Great. So now if we click build, it should compile fine. It says cannot find AR view in scope, cannot find AR view in scope. Type AR view container does not confirm to protocol UI view representable. And that's because we need to import the AR kit framework here, but also the reality kit framework. framework. So reality kit. So now if we click build, it should work fine. And here you need to return an AR view. Yeah, we'll do that once we make the AR view here. So let's do that now. So here what we need is an AR view and we're going to access that AR view in a different piece of code to add in planes, do anchors and all that AR bit. So for that, what we're going to do first is not create the AR view here, but create a separate script. I'm going to name it AR view controller. So I'm going to call this AR view controller. First import reality kit, also AR kit. And let's name this final class AR view controller and this would be an observable object and I'll explain soon why. Observable object means we can publish certain fields in this class and any subscribers to that field would get notified every time that field changes. So also in this case what we want is just one instance of this object because we just need one AR view in this app and because of that we'll create uh, this as a final class and we'll use static var shared equals AR view controller and what this will allow you to do is just have one instance of this class and share that object across the app without instantiating it. So we can simply call AR view controller dot share to get access to this object. And in here, we would of course have a variable called AR view. And this would be the AR view which we'll use to add in planes, anchors and add in all the AR logic. We also want to make this published because every time the AR view changes, say a new anchor is added or a new plane is detected, we want to pass the data on to the subscribers. I'll come to this soon, but briefly the subscriber would be here because here is where we are converting this AR view into a Swift UI view. So in the AR view controller here, we would have all the AR logic and every time that changes the AR view, the new updated AR view is updated directly in the Swift UI view here. And we'll do all that bit soon. So let's go back here to the AR view controller now. And now we have got the AR view. Now let's create some methods. So firstly, we need to initialize this class. And we're going to initialize the AR view as a simple AR view and frame equals zero. So this is the initialization. And next, we want to create some functions to start the AR session and plane detection, namely horizontal plane detection, because here we want to detect the surface of a table. And so first, the master function here, which will have public access, as you can see here, Firstly, we want to start plane detection and then we want to start top detection. Let's create functions for each now. And here, first, I want to create a function for plane detection. And we've done this load, so I'm not going to repeat myself. And you can check out my other videos for line by line overview. 
But essentially, in start plane detection, what I'm doing first is taking this AR view right here and set the automatically configuration session to true. And then I'm going to create a configuration object, which is an AR world tracking configuration. And then I'm going to set the plane detection to horizontal because we just wanted to detect horizontal planes and set environment texturing to automatic so that the lighting and everything would be natural. And with this configuration, I'm going to again get access to the AR view and I'm going to run this AR view with the following configuration. And this would essentially start the plane detection. So that's the start plane detection function. I'm going to create the function called start detection, start type detection. So this again takes our AR view and adds a gesture recognizer to the view, which is a tap gesture recognizer, where essentially every time the user taps on the screen, this handle tap callback will be called. And we need to define this handle tap callback now. And that's the callback that is called every time the user taps on the screen. And in here, we could get access to the 2D location to the screen. So next, let's create the handle tap method. So I just created the handle tap method here. That's this. And again, the handle tab method is prefixed with an objc because this is an objective C interface here because of the selector. Inside here, first we get access to the 2D location of the tab on the screen by taking in the recognizer and getting access to the location in the AR view. And this gives you the 2D coordinate of the tab location. And then we do a raycast to convert this 2D into the 3D world position. For that, we take again the AR view, do a raycast from this 2D location, tab location, and then we only go for the horizontal planes. And this result would contain all the planes that's detected. And then we get access to the first plane detected from this array and assign it as the first result variable. And then from here, we can get access to the 3D location of the tap point to the raycast. And we store that in this world position coordinate. So this world position coordinate contains the associated 3D location for the point where the user tap on the screen. What we can do is place an AR object at that specific 3D point in the real world. And for this, I will create another function, and this would be called place object. So this function should be familiar to you by now. What this does is it places any object that's passed to this function into a specific point in the real world. So this is an AR 3D object, that's why it's of type model entity, and it will place it at a 3D location in the real world. First, we create an anchor, which are like hooks that, are, that locks the 3D object in the real world. And we do this by creating an anchor entity at the world position specified here. Then we tie the model entity here, i.e. the 3D model, into this anchor by adding it as a child of the weather model anchor. And then we add this anchor plus the model entity attached to it to the AR view scene in this line of code. We're creating an anchor, tying the model to the anchor, and then adding the anchor to the scene. And over here, what we need to do also is we need to declare this weather model anchor variable in, as a global object. So let's just go up here and I'm going to type in private var weather model anchor. And this would be of type anchor entity. And this is optional. Now, if you go down here, that's the, exactly the variable that we're using here. So that's the place object function. It places the AR model into a specific location in the real world. So let's just collapse that and let's go back to our handle tab method. So now that we have the place object function, what we need next is we need an object to place. Uh, for this episode, I'm just going to create a template 3D model and a material. And in the next episode, we will create the actual weather AR model with the weather visualization and 3D text on top. It's too much work for this video, so I'll create that in the next one. So what I'm going to do first is create a mesh let mesh equals uh, mesh resource. Let's just create, uh, say, a sphere, generate sphere of radius 0.5. Now let's say it's making 0.03. Great, so we'll add in a material too to this mesh, and this would be a simple material, and the color would be, say, black and metallic to true. And finally, we can create the model entity out of this mesh and the material. So I'm going to create the model equals. Uh, model entity and this would be with a mesh which is the mesh we just created and a material again the material that we just made great so now this gives us our model entity we placed this in the wrong place so this needs to be outside the handle tab method so right here great so now let's call the place object function place object so the object we want to place is this model at the position 
that we detected through the raycast, which is the world position. So again, in the handle tab method, we get the 2D location, do raycasting to get the corresponding 3D point, and then we get the first plane that's detected and place the model that we just made in that position using this place object function we just defined here. So that's the AR bit. Now let's just collapse all bit, take a helicopter view, and now what, we, what will happen is every time we call this start AR session function from a different class, what will happen is it would start the plane detection and it would start the tap detection. And then every time a user touches on the screen, a ball would be placed at the table at the point where the user tapped. So that's what this class will do. And all we have to do simply is call the start AR session from outside. And, and we also have to remember every time a new ball is added, a new anchor is added, this AR view would get updated because the anchors are added to this AR view variable. And because this is a published variable, any subscribers outside that is subscribed to this AR view would get these updates as well. So that's why we created this as a published variable so that we can get this live AR view and access it in different uh, in the Swift UI class. Now let's integrate this AR view into the Swift UI app. So if you remember before in the content view, we created the AR container where we're trying to convert a UI kit AR view into a Swift UI AR view. And within that, there was this make UI view function, and this expects us to return an AR view. And here, what we want to do is we want to, the AR view that we want to return is the AR view that is uh, published here, because that's the central AR view in our app, to put it that way, because this is where all the AR stuff happens. Now, to get access to this AR view, again, we don't have to instantiate this object, because remember, this is a final class. We can get access to this object globally by simply getting the shared variable here. So what we can do is go back to content view and call AR view controller dot shared. And this would give us access to this global object, the AR view controller, which does not have to be instantiated. And then we can get access to the AR view object here. So this, this guy. Okay, so no, before we get access to the AR view, what we want is, of course, we want to start the AR session. So again, remember, this starts off the plane detection and the tapping functionality and all of that already. So once we started this AR session, the AR view would be live and functioning. And then what we can do is return that AR view. Again, by using this global access, shared.ar view inside the class we just created. Great, so now if we click build, it should all build fine. Great, so that's working fine. We need to do also one more thing. Let's create a different structure. And this time it's purely a Swift UI view. So we'll call this AR view display. And this will inherit from view again. And we'll make the body some view. And inside this body, we want to call this AR view container. And then we would choose edges ignore safe area for all. And this would give a full screen display of the AR view. Now we successfully have an AR view component for Swift UI. Now we can call it in our main content view. And all the AR logic we can handle in this AR view controller. So we don't need to do that in the Swift UI code. We can do all that bit here. And every time there's a change made to the AR view variable here, because it's published, it will be reflected in this main content view. Awesome. Now let's go to our content view and add in the AR view here. So as a reminder, again, let's remove this text view, which we used to debug would simply display the temperature and the condition because we don't need this anymore. We will add the actual AR stuff later. So let's remove this. And to recap, again, remember in the main view, we got the search view, a search bar on the top and a search toggle button on the bottom. So what we want is we need to add in a Z stack now. And in the Z stack, first we want the AR view. And then on top of that, we will overlay the UI, which we created before, which would be all this bit. And we'll just name it UI. So let's take all this and bring it right below the AR view. And for the AR view, we'll just call the AR view display that we just created here. So AR view display. Also, before we finish, we need to do one more thing. If we go down to our AR view container, remember we created the AR view controller class here. And because we want access to this class globally, we forgot to do one thing. And that's we need to add this as an environment object to the content view. And for that, what we can do, we can go to our Swift UI weather app this class that came by default when we created the app. Here we can create an environment object. And over here we need to type arviewcontroller.shared. So this would allow any views in the Swift UI app 
to get access to this AR view controller object. So now in content view, uh, this bit would work. If you didn't do that, it wouldn't work. So just make sure you add that as the environment object. Now if you click build and run, there's also one more error that shows up. It shows that this has been crashed because it attempted to access privacy sensitive data without a usage description. And that's because we need to go to our info plist and we need to ask permission to use the camera. So for that, what we can do is again, go over here, info plist and add in a new key and look for the camera usage description and make sure that's enabled. Awesome, so let's try building this. Awesome, so this is working now. And in the next video, instead of a dummy cube here placed on the table, what we'll do is and add in the weather visualization in AR and the weather temperature text. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.